In this video, we'll explore the result of a project and the end product you'll ultimately deliver, which is what holds value for the user and the customer. I'm going to define the term value as it relates to project management. Then, I'll share some strategies and tactics you can employ to maximize the value your team delivers. The end product of a project is what provides value to the user. Value could be financial benefits, user growth and engagement, or compliance adherence. The term value can mean different things for each customer based on what they expect the product to accomplish. The number one Agile principle is to satisfy the customer by delivering valuable software. You can always replace the term software with the words product or solution for non-software related projects. Delivering value as quickly and efficiently as possible to users is the primary reason Agile came into existence. The term value-driven delivery means you and your team are focused on delivering a product of high value. Just because you deliver a product, that doesn't mean it's valuable. As I explained during the overview of Agile history, there was a growing problem of project teams churning out products that weren't very valuable. This is because teams were focused on the process and weren't taking the time to evaluate the usefulness of the product until the very end, after it had been delivered. Agile redirects the team's focus to be about the product and ensures that the process for producing the product supports the goal of delivering value. How can you make sure your team is focused on value-driven delivery? Build the right thing, build the thing right, and run it right. Remember, Agile and Scrum evolved out of the software industry, so the terms build and run describe processes for building or running a software program, machine, or other technology. You can replace the words build and run with terms like create, produce, or deliver for non-software projects to describe the same concept. Let's break this down. First and foremost, to deliver value, you have to build the right thing. You can do this by making sure you really understand what your customers want. You might ask a customer what they want, and they may say they want to build a website to promote their new plant service. But take this one step further and ask about their goals. Do they want to increase their brand recognition? Do they want to get more customers? Having a solution-oriented conversation with your customer will help you build the right thing. The agile value of individuals and interactions over processes and tools extends beyond just the team. It refers to having those important interactions with our customers and users too. Next, you must build the thing right. That's lingo for ensuring that your team only builds the requested or approved features. Working on features that aren't necessary can lead to complexities in the product that don't add any value to the users. In addition, building more than you need delays or reduces your value upon delivery. It also increases the risk of bugs or other issues down the road. And finally, in addition to building the right thing and building the thing right, you have to make sure that you're running it right. To run it right means that your team has thought through how the user will interact with the product once it's been delivered. Make sure your team thinks through some of the operational tasks that will need to be addressed after the product has left the door. Ask the following questions. How do users get support? How does the product add value to users long after they initially received it? And how do you make sure that new features and capabilities reach the existing users? Building the right thing, building the thing right, and running it right all work together to ensure that the team creates a steady and continuous delivery of value to users throughout the life of the product. Let's consider how the Virtual Verde team can ensure that they focus on value-driven delivery. First, how could the Virtual Verde team ensure they build the right thing? How do they know they're creating something the customer really wants? In this case, the team needs to ensure that they create a service providing the types of plants that customers want to buy. So they could create a survey that asks current and potential customers what their plant preferences are and the type of home office design they want to create. Then, they'll use this data to update the user stories on their product backlog. Next, how could the Virtual Verde team ensure they build the thing right? Once the team knows what kinds of plants and designs the customer wants, how do they ensure the right processes are in place to deliver them? Well, 
the team can secure a trusted plant vendor that carries the desired plant types and work with designers to make pots, vases, and other plant accessories in the different design styles that customers like. The team can also communicate with marketing to make sure the types of plants and designs that customers want are prominently featured on the website and in the catalog. And finally, how can the Virtual Verde team make sure to run it right? How do they ensure customer satisfaction once a customer has signed up for the service? How does the Virtual Verde team retain their customers long after their plants have been delivered? The Virtual Verde team can send out follow-up customer satisfaction surveys that ask about their plant and design offerings, delivery times, plant quality, and other insights. The team can then use this data to continually evaluate their vendors, plant and design offerings, and marketing strategy. For example, the team could find ways to increase the quality of service by offering watering cans and automatic plant health systems, or even free monthly gardening tips so the user feels empowered and supported to maintain their plants. There are many ways to maximize your team's value delivery. Building the right thing, building the thing right, and running it right all work together to ensure that the team delivers value to users. As a project manager, part of your job is to help teams stay focused on delivering value. A great way to do this is to build a value roadmap. It's an agile way of mapping out the timelines and requirements for the product development process and can be used in all types of businesses. This roadmap is a guide that demonstrates where to go, how to get there, and what to accomplish along the way in order to maximize value. It helps map out a product idea and the strategy for how to deliver it. As the team follows their roadmap, they gather input from customers and stakeholders and apply their findings to each iteration of the product. Creating a roadmap helps the team explain the vision of the product and can also be used to identify important milestones. A typical value roadmap has three components, a product vision, a product roadmap, and release plans. The first component of a value roadmap is the product vision. Your product vision is a critical step to starting any new Scrum project. Your vision is based on your user interviews and market analysis and becomes your team's North Star. In other words, it's what guides your team. The product vision defines what the product is, how it supports the customer's business strategy, and who will use it. Next, there's the product roadmap, which the product owner is responsible for creating and maintaining. It provides a high-level view of the expected product, its requirements, and an estimated schedule for reaching milestones. It's key to making sure your team is building the right thing. The third component of a value roadmap is a series of release plans. The product owner and project manager work together to develop these plans. Product releases occur when the team has developed a basic working version of a given feature or requirement. A release plan includes the approximate date when the team is expected to release and deliver certain features to the customer or user. An agile team may have several releases over the course of a project until their project is considered done. For this reason, only the first release date should be considered to be set in stone. The rest of the release plan is based on early estimates and is subject to change as the project proceeds. A release plan contains a release goal, which is an overall business goal for the features you plan to include in the release. The list of backlog items, such as epics, user stories, or features that you require for that release goal. An estimated release date, and any other relevant dates that impact a release like a convention or major holiday. It's important to add all of your release plans to your value roadmap to help you stay focused on the path to your overall value goal. In summary, the value roadmap contains three key components, the product vision, product roadmap, and release plan. These three work together to help an Agile team reach its goals through multiple iterations. A value roadmap only works if the team is collaborative and all stakeholders work together regularly. This will ensure that the project achieves results that align with the Agile values and principles. My first tip is about creating the product roadmap. The product roadmap provides a high-level view of the expected product, its requirements, and an estimated timeline for reaching milestones. Many of those milestones will be product release dates, you'll need to ensure that product release dates are only rough estimates. This is because, as an Agile team, you know that things can and do change. 
This is especially true since these dates could be anywhere from several months to several years down the road. If the roadmap is too specific, it might set the team up for failure because the dates can't be guaranteed. Speaking of product release dates, this leads me to my next tip, which is about the release plans. There are some important things to know about creating a release plan, which includes approximate target release dates. It's very important that the product owner and project manager or scrum master work together to develop each release plan. This is because the release plans need to connect the product roadmap with the team's capacity and velocity. The capacity and velocity is the measure of the team's ability to complete work at a certain pace. A release plan that isn't connected to the team's ability to complete work could be unrealistic and lead to an unsustainable pace for the team. This would violate one of our Agile principles, which states, Agile processes promote sustainable development. The sponsors, developers, and users should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. If there are any hard dates or deadlines on your roadmap, meaning a date that cannot change, factor these into any release plans that might be affected. For example, Virtual Verde might realize that Office Green has an office decor convention in October, and they want to launch the first phase of Virtual Verde services at that event. Communicate hard deadlines with your stakeholders so there's a clear understanding of must-have features. This way, if the team discovers it might be at risk for not meeting the deadlines, they can quickly focus on the must-have features. Since Agile is all about embracing and anticipating change, it might seem like having a release plan goes against the Agile value of responding to change over following a plan. But having a release plan does not mean you are resistant to change. An Agile team treats a release plan as a living artifact, so the plan can change based on the environment and new information that's received. Some common factors that may result in a change to the release plan could include a change in team velocity or how much work the team can do in a given iteration or sprint. This could be from adding or losing team members or even just efficiency gains from how they work. A second factor is a change to the product scope if the product owner approves a change to the product. And a third factor that could affect a release plan is improving the understanding of how much effort is needed to build certain features. The team may discover that a user story or epic is more or less difficult than they originally thought after doing some research or simply from better understanding the product space. My last tip for creating an effective value roadmap is that the Scrum Master or Project Manager should always review the release plan before starting a sprint planning session. They review the release plan to check whether the team is on track. If the team is off track, the Scrum Master needs to have an open conversation with the product owner and business people to figure out what they can adjust to get back on track. This is where the Scrum value of transparency is key. An effective value roadmap is a powerful tool for building and delivering successful products. The plans you create will help you stay focused on delivering maximum value and the ability to remain flexible and stay agile. As you conduct your project management job search, you're likely to find many of the organizations you apply to as either already being agile, making the switch to becoming agile, or not yet agile, but ready to transition. As an entry-level project manager, it's not likely you'll be expected to lead a complete change to Agile in a large organization, but you may be expected to help support the change process. On the other hand, you might get hired by a smaller organization that does want you to lead the change. The techniques I'll share with you in this video will set you up to be prepared for all of these different scenarios. Let's begin. First, let's review some of the key learnings from one of the earlier courses on organizational culture and change management. When an organization shifts the way it conducts business, it usually requires a shift in its culture as well. Understanding organizational culture and the change management process is crucial when introducing new ways of working. Organizational culture is based on shared workplace values and pops up in people's behaviors, activities, the way they communicate, and how they work with each other. A change that's out of sync with the existing culture is much more difficult to complete. In fact, there's research proving that companies that don't consider the cultural aspects of Agile are more likely to fail. Change management is the process of getting folks to adopt a new product, process, or in Agile's case, a new value system. Okay, let's get into how to help introduce or continue the adoption of Agile or Scrum into an organization. 
Unless the organization has many years of agile behaviors and experience, you may be facing a change in organizational culture. These changes take time, sometimes years to complete. As a project manager, you might only implement a few changes, and that's okay. You'll still be adding value by demonstrating to your team or organization new and different ways of approaching their business. I'll share with you some words of wisdom I heard from a colleague many years ago. They said, change takes patient persistence. It may feel like things are taking too long, but in many cases, small changes add up to a big change in the long run. So what are some ways that you can bring Agile or Scrum to a new team? First, I want you to think about the concept of creating a sense of ownership and urgency. When people feel a sense of ownership and urgency around a project, it increases interest, motivation, and engagement with the project outcome. One way to create a sense of ownership is to find an executive sponsor who also feels a sense of ownership for the change you're creating. Wherever possible, point out connections between the changes you're making and the company's stated mission or values. Having buy-in from someone at the top increases your chances of successfully driving any change in organizational culture. Ideally, your sponsor will reinforce the benefits of Agile to the organization and give you the support and resources you need. What about creating a sense of urgency? My favorite approach to this is to ask the team, the organization, and the stakeholders questions about what's working and what's not working right now. Then, I ensure the changes relate directly to those opportunities. Here are some questions you could try. What is preventing us from providing the best possible product to our customers? What is allowing our competitors to outperform us in this market? And how can we help our teams become more productive and supported in their work? This not only helps you prioritize your work, you get the team thinking about the possibilities they'll enjoy if the change is successful. You can use these questions going forward to collect feedback during the change. Coming back to these questions and demonstrating the incremental improvements is the true spirit of Agile. Let's come back to our friends at Virtual Verde. When the team set out to create this Agile project and change towards an Agile approach, they realized that the CEO of Office Green wanted to make sure they took advantage of the market trends since more people were moving to home offices. They created a sense of urgency by highlighting that home office decorating was becoming a hot online trend and they wanted Office Green to become a part of the action. Lastly, the Virtual Verde team had lots of experience from their Plant Pals project, so they could gather a team who was motivated to apply what they learned and try a different approach to a new market opportunity. Bringing Agile or Scrum to a new team could be challenging, but well worth the effort. By applying some of these techniques, you'll increase your chances of success. I have found that, with a little patient persistence, you can get past some of the initial skepticism, and the benefits of an Agile approach will start to become obvious to the team. Once this happens, change will become easier to drive over time with their commitments. I once had a large global team at Google of about 200 developers. My director and I wanted to transform them into an Agile organization. It took us about two years and many trips to different work sites for me and my team of project managers to deliver the tools, processes, and coaching to bring the team up to speed on an Agile way of working. I approached that transformation very much like how I described here, and it worked. As the project manager or scrum master, you're in the position to help the team improve. In other words, you're the designated Agile coach. You're there to help the team recognize areas for improvement and help them implement solutions. In this video, I'm going to break down your role as a coach into three steps, similar to how you might approach being a coach for a sports team. First, you'll design the plays with the team. Second, you'll provide feedback to the team. And lastly, you'll celebrate and learn with the team. Let me elaborate on each area a bit more. First, the Scrum Master designs the plays. Although the Scrum Master owns the playbook, it should be created with the whole team. The playbook should include how the whole team runs a sprint review, how the team works day to day, and how the team publishes plans to stakeholders. When updates are needed to the team's plays, it's important that you involve the team in any decisions. Take them through new processes together, think through all the positions on the team, and make sure everyone notices the flow. 
A personal example of this was when I facilitated a brainstorm meeting with my team to discuss which parts of our process weren't working. We used sticky notes to organize our ideas for improvement and then prioritize the ideas to implement changes. Second is provide feedback. You should always provide feedback to your team and stakeholders as early as possible and on a day-to-day -day basis. Just like a coach gives directions from the sidelines, the Scrum Master needs to provide guidance all the time. In addition to feedback provided in the moment, the Scrum Master also takes in a big picture view. This is similar to how a coach might watch a video recap of the game to find patterns that need improvement or plays that worked so well they should do it every game. Providing feedback shouldn't only be about fixing broken things, but finding processes and activities that work really well and encourage the team to continue using the things that work. Third, celebrate and learn. Congratulate the team often on a job well done, a happy customer, or a big solution launch. If the team quote unquote loses, meaning they weren't successful in fulfilling a requirement, acknowledge that loss as critical data that will help the team improve next time. It's important for the team to still feel positive about any disappointment and think of it as a learning opportunity. As Thomas Edison famously said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. As a Scrum Master or Agile Project Manager, you play an essential role in the team, and you're a big part of why Scrum and Agile work at all. You're responsible for ensuring the team is always improving and becoming the best team it can possibly be. Awesome. Now you know the three steps of coaching your team, designing the plays with the team, providing feedback to the team, and celebrating and learning with the team. Next up, we'll learn how to anticipate and respond to real-world risks with Agile and Scrum implementations. Meet you there. As the project manager or scrum master, it's your responsibility to help teams improve how they work and coach them on how to effectively adopt scrum practices. So anticipating and understanding how to work through common challenges before they happen is super important. Remember the four themes of agile principles that we discussed in an earlier video? To refresh your memory, the themes are value delivery, business collaboration, team dynamics and culture, and retrospectives. In this video, we'll focus on challenges you might encounter with an Agile team that are related to the first three themes. The first set of challenges are related to value delivery, which is about making sure the team is delivering working solutions frequently. Some signs that your team is experiencing value delivery issues could include things like, the team has started missing expected delivery dates, and is taking a lot longer than usual to complete tasks. Or you might notice that the team seem burned out, is working long hours, and showing signs of exhaustion. Or maybe the team has too many items in progress at any given time, preventing tasks from actually getting to done. If you start to notice your team is struggling in these areas, there are a few things you can do to help. You can try doing more demos of the solutions with the team to ensure they're delivering on the value roadmap. When the team pauses to take in a big picture view of the working product, they often notice areas where they can improve and speed up the work. You can also use retrospectives to ask the team if anything is slowing them down, like waiting on dependencies or communication challenges. It can also help to do a quick review with the team and make sure that everyone understands what done means. And finally, be sure to focus on only a few user stories per sprint. This ensures the team finishes an item together before moving on. Putting all this into practice can be harder than you might think. My current team is asked to cover a lot of ground in each sprint, so it can be tempting for us to try and tackle too much at once. But doing that usually just makes everything take longer, so it's not actually helpful. It's better to maintain focus and deliver fewer backlog items in one sprint than to deliver a lot of items in more sprints. Okay. Another set of challenges you might encounter relate to the business collaboration theme. To recap, business collaboration is about making sure the developers are collaborating with business people on how to build the right product. There are a few common signs that your team might be experiencing business collaboration issues. You might notice that the team is overwhelmed with critical feedback or change requests from business people after they reviewed the working solution. That could lead to people on your team avoiding asking for feedback or complaining about requested changes coming from the product owner or business team. Or you might start to detect an us versus them mentality between the team doing the work and management. 
I've sometimes noticed this manifest in negative comments from team members, like, oh, don't give a demo to the salesperson. It's not ready yet. And they'll just point out what's wrong. If you notice any of these signs, there are a few things you can do to help rebuild trust and collaboration between the developers and the business people. To start with, try addressing critical feedback and change requests by doing more demos. This ensures feedback comes in at a steady pace and that everyone involved has a shared understanding of what done means. Next, consider conducting a solution design sprint, which is an entire sprint spent working solely on the solution design. These are most effective when the working team and the business people actually sit together and collaborate on the solution. Finally, you can help your team focus by ensuring changes to the backlog are introduced only in between sprints. This prevents your team from getting distracted by possible changes, which could stress them out and lead to resentment. For example, I was once on a scrum team where the engineering director loved to stop by the engineer's desk to ask for a quick dashboard, which is a web page that shows data. Asking the engineer to do this completely disrupted the team's focus and slowed down the team's velocity. We finally decided to ask the director to come straight to the scrum master when they needed something so that it could be planned properly and not interrupt the team's current workflow. Okay, let's move on to the third theme, team dynamics and culture. Human beings are complex creatures with lots of different motivations and styles of working. So it's likely that you'll encounter at least a few challenges in this area. Here are a few common signs of team dynamics and culture issues to watch out for. First is low team morale. If people are super grumpy, irritated, or generally in a bad mood, then you might have some underlying team dynamics issues to sort out. Next, watch out for signs that the team is experiencing lots of conflict. If people are arguing a lot and issues aren't getting resolved, the team probably needs some help. Not everyone is going to get their way. If team members feel resentful or are holding onto grudges, it'll negatively impact the team's performance. And finally, and this might surprise you, but low conflict can also be a sign that the team's experiencing issues. We're usually taught to believe that no conflict is a good thing, right? But if a team never has disagreements, it's a sign that they might be worried about starting a conflict because they don't feel like it's a safe environment. Being open and courageous are two of our scrum values, but it's not always easy to put them into practice. As a project manager, part of your role is helping your team get comfortable being honest with each other and working through conflicts together. If you notice these or any other clear signs of team distress, here are some ideas you can try. You could run a team brainstorm session about how to work better together. Ask the team to identify some areas to improve on. An example exercise could involve asking the team to write down stories about the worst team they've ever worked on and the best team they've ever worked on, then sharing them in a meeting. Then you might have the team create a list of do's and don'ts for working together based on the stories everyone shared. Another idea is to change up the workflows. Try pairing up people to work together on a hard task or change up the way you run one of your regular meetings. It can also help to take a training class together or watch a video about team dynamics and discuss it as a group. You can also try a retrospective technique from the internet. There are a ton of great resources out there. One of my favorite retrospective techniques is called the six hats thinking technique. In this technique, each team member chooses a different hat to explore the subject of the retrospective. The different hats each involve a different objective, like discussing positives or negatives that happened during the sprint, or sharing emotive statements. This helps ensure that the team takes a well-rounded approach to the retrospective. The three challenges we'll focus on are managing a stable product roadmap, incomplete implementation of Scrum, and experiencing a lack of stability within the team. First, let's discuss the challenge of managing a stable product roadmap. Agile projects almost always experience changes in the product roadmap. Being able to respond quickly and productively to these changes is a core Agile value. But it is possible to have too much change impacting the project, which can lead to an unstable product roadmap. There are two main causes of an unstable product roadmap, product ambition and product assumptions. Let's cover product ambition first. Product ambition poses a challenge when product leadership is overly ambitious about what the team can realistically deliver. 
The product owner is responsible for representing the product to customers and executives. Because the product owner wants to make the stakeholders happy, it can be easy for them to overpromise what the project can deliver. For example, imagine that our Office Green CEO notices that the virtual Verde business in North America is doing really well. In a meeting, they say to the product owner, this is amazing. I'd love to launch Virtual Verde in Asia in the next four months. What do you think? The product owner really wants to deliver, so they tell the CEO, sure. But the product owner won't actually know if meeting this objective is possible until they discuss it with the team, which means they might accidentally be setting an unrealistic expectation with the CEO. So how do you deal with this challenge? Here are three ideas to maintain a healthy roadmap management plan between you and the product owner. First, agree upfront how to handle new opportunities. Define when they are reviewed and estimated and how customer or management commitments are made. Second, set up regular roadmap reviews with the entire team, at least quarterly, so that everyone knows what to expect. And third, promote sharing knowledge between the product owner and the development team so that the product owner knows how much effort the product takes to build and the team is aware of changes as early as possible. The second thing that can cause an unstable product roadmap is making too many product assumptions. When there's uncertainty in a project, you may be required to make some assumptions to move things forward. But making too many assumptions can jeopardize the team's success. Let's go back to our virtual Verde example. Sending plants to customers' homes is a complex process. You need to consider a lot of different factors, like which plants will sell best, which plants will stay healthy in a wide variety of climates and settings, and what vendors to work with. The team does their best to study the market and opportunity, but they have to make some assumptions and move forward with decisions relying on less than perfect information. As a way to deal with product assumption issues, document the assumptions and make them transparent. This allows you to discuss the assumptions as a team and either agree that they're safe assumptions to make or decide to question and double check them. If you do decide to double check them, you can use unbiased user research. Unbiased user research gathers information about what users really want. It allows you to confirm or reject assumptions and helps you move forward with confidence. User research could involve conducting surveys, running focus groups, or using other methods to collect objective data about your users. The next big challenge you might encounter relates to an incomplete implementation of Scrum. This happens when Scrum practices are only partially implemented or when Scrum practices are implemented without proper support and coaching. Scrum roles, artifacts, and activities are designed to work together as a set. If you only partially implement them, you might end up reducing their benefits. Incomplete implementation of Scrum can cause a lot of issues. First, it can lead to a loss of clear roles and responsibilities. To implement Scrum completely, you should define the roles for the team and then fill those roles with specific individuals. For example, if you try to have a developer also act as the Scrum Master, they might not have the bandwidth to do either role very well. Better to have developers be on the development team and you, the project manager, be the Scrum Master. You might also be tempted to skip some events or blend them to save time. But a lack of clear boundaries for sprint review, sprint retrospective, and sprint planning can lead to reduced transparency, inspection, and adaptation. And these are all essential to experience the full benefits of Scrum. And finally, not providing the team with the Scrum coaching they need would also mean that you haven't fulfilled your role as Scrum Master. It's your job to fully explain the Scrum practices and provide coaching so your team understands the reasoning behind the practices and can embrace their benefits. The solution to all of these challenges is to implement Scrum completely. Being the Scrum Master is a critical role. You're the coach, so you should reinforce the connections between the team's activities and the Scrum and Agile values. For example, if your team complains about daily stand-ups, remind them that the purpose of stand-ups is to gain feedback, unblock work, ask for help, and reinforce the importance of staying focused on the sprint goals. You can also make sure roles are well-defined and properly fulfilled. For example, ensure that all team members understand their own roles as well as the roles of their teammates and how those roles interact. For example, the product owner makes sure we build the right thing, the development team ensures we build it right, and Scrum Master ensures we build it fast. 
And finally, the last big challenge you might encounter with Agile and Scrum teams is a lack of team stability. When the team changes a lot, with people leaving and joining frequently, it can make things unpredictable and disrupt the flow of work. There are a few things you can do to address instability on your team. First, have a quick onboarding process for new team members to help them get to know the rest of the team and understand the project. Second, use a pair programming style where a new team member teams up with a colleague and starts learning on the job. This also helps if people leave the team since a partner should be able to pick up where they left off. And third, if team composition changes because members keep leaving, try having shorter sprints. This way, team members can wrap up their last sprint's worth of work before leaving. To recap, the three main challenges we've covered in this video are managing a stable product roadmap, incomplete implementation of Scrum, and a lack of team stability. I've encountered each of these challenges and more in many of my teams. The wonderful thing about Agile is that there's a huge community of Agilists that are happy to help with any challenges you might come across. Even an experienced Agilist like myself asks for help now and then. Coming up, we'll explore how Agile is evolving and keeping up with the times. Now that's an Agile way to be. Since its creation in 2001, Agile popularity has increased incredibly fast. One industry report showed that 85% of organizations have adopted a product-centric model, which is associated with an Agile approach. The State of Agile report describes how 30% of those companies using the product-centric model apply a hybrid of methodologies. This means that being able to blend methods will be a super useful skill to have as you start your project management career. Like we explained in an earlier video, one of the reasons for Agile's growing popularity is that we're in a very VUCA world. Businesses face a lot of volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity, and they recognize that Agile and the frameworks that derive from it are a way to overcome those challenges. In this video, we'll discuss how Agile has already started evolving and explore some emerging ideas about how it might continue to evolve in the future. The Agile Manifesto as a mindset or philosophy hasn't changed much in almost 30 years. The frameworks it inspired, though, have continued changing and evolving to keep up with changing business environments. One emerging Agile framework is called DevOps, which combines software development and IT operations. Our Google Cloud Platform business defines DevOps as an organizational and cultural movement that aims to increase software delivery velocity, improve service reliability, and build shared ownership among software stakeholders. Like all Agile frameworks, DevOps aims to shorten the product lifecycle and deliver software products continuously and with very high quality. DevOps emerged when software companies were faced with trying to figure out how to ensure their software products would run reliably for billions of people across the world, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As someone who spent my first few years at Google studying product breakdowns, I can tell you how difficult this is. If a business has the ability to launch products and features fast and reliably to a global marketplace, that's a significant competitive advantage. DevOps is about growing and managing teams and organizations that can build and evolve large-scale systems at a rapid pace. These systems need to be both secure and reliable so they can better deliver value to customers and organizations. If you decide to pursue a project manager role in the DevOps framework, you'll venture into the future of agile approaches and large-scale software systems that are literally changing the world. Pretty exciting, right? One of the next frontiers of agile is called business agility, which involves incorporating agile principles into the wide sphere of management so that the organization can thrive in high VUCA environments. Organizations that want to become agile in this sense often find themselves rethinking everything, from financial planning processes, governance and reporting structures, to hiring and HR practices, and much more. They're looking for ways to make Agile values and frameworks work for larger and larger organizations. As an Agile project manager in a larger organization, you might find yourself using frameworks like Scrum of Scrums or Scaled Agile Framework, also known as SAFE. Check out the resources and readings for this video to learn more. It's also important to call out that Agile has reached a lot of industries beyond technology and software. Recently, I was asked to give Agile training to the Google sales team in Latin America. They experienced major changes in their market, 
and wanted to develop the skills to react quickly to those changes and still deliver results. During the training, we had great discussions about the benefits of Agile. The team especially liked how Agile can help reduce risk at all stages of their sales cycle through early feedback and frequent and thorough discussions with teammates and customers. Even the construction industry has started applying an Agile approach to their projects. An article published by the Project Management Institute describes how construction projects used Agile to deal with delays and budget overruns by translating the Agile manifesto into construction industry terms, like silos are minimized and close cooperation is encouraged. And finally, Agile methodologies can also be applied to your own personal life. For example, I was planning a move recently and immediately set up a Kanban board to start planning my tasks. Have any projects in your life that could use a Kanban board? How about a garage cleanup or a family reunion or barbecue? Who's on your scrum team? From DevOps and business agility to agile methodologies in the construction industry and beyond, it's clear that agile's benefits will be useful for a long time to come. The practitioners, project managers, and teams who live and breathe the agile values are the ones that help agile evolve and advance, which means that you can play an important role in contributing to the future of agile too. Coming up, we'll explore how to approach your job search so you can find an opportunity in Agile project management. Meet you there. We just covered the evolution of Agile and I shared how other organizations are adopting Agile practices. We also discussed the best mindset for delivering value to users as quickly as possible. Agile project management opportunities are everywhere. Whether you're looking for a new role in Agile or want to incorporate Agile into your current lifestyle or workplace. I have a few tips to help get you there. Let's start by discussing how to land an Agile project management position. These types of jobs might show up on job boards as Agile project manager, Scrum master, IT Agile project manager, or a DevOps project manager. After taking this course, you'll be a great fit for any one of these. Look for a role that suits your experience level, complements your industry domain expertise, and offers growth opportunities. Also, look for a role that provides a culture that'd be a good fit for you. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is to find an employer who supports your goals and personal growth. I'm a hiring manager at Google. I've interviewed and hired many project managers here, both Agile and non-Agile. And I'd like to share how I approach interviewing and searching for an excellent Agile project manager for my team. Even if a candidate doesn't have Agile on their resume, one of the first things I ask them is, what's the difference between Agile and waterfall project management? Their answer usually tells me instantly if they know what Agile is about, and it's a great launching off point for more follow-up questions. In the candidate's answer to that question, I look for a few specific things. I want to know whether the candidate knows that Agile is more than just scrum, sprints, and stand-ups. Do they know it's also about founding values that include customer collaboration, value delivery, self-organizing teams? I'm also interested to know whether they make Waterfall out to be the worst solution. Or do they know that all projects benefit from certain types of approaches, including Waterfall, like clear requirements, risk management, stakeholder awareness, and more. I also ask, how do you know when to use an Agile approach or frameworks on your project? Their answer helps me know if they understand how Agile or Scrum can help a project manager with specific challenges and what those challenges are. And finally, I ask, if you are facing resistance with your team following a Scrum or Agile practice, how do you convince them to give it a try? Their answer helps me understand how they use communication and influence skills and whether they truly believe that an Agile team can be self-organizing. At Google, our teams sometimes resist being told what to do, especially because this can diminish innovation and creativity. So I always want to hire project managers who work with a team and don't try to force them to do things a particular way. An important part of every interview is when the candidate gets to ask the interviewers questions. These could be questions about the job, about the interviewer's experience in project management, about the culture, and about the job expectations. This is a huge opportunity for you as the candidate. As an Agile project manager, you now know how crucial culture is to the success of an Agile project. This is a great time to ask questions that will help you determine if you'll be happy with this job or not. Some questions you should ask are, how supportive is the management here towards blending project management approaches? 
what's the first thing I should know about the culture here? And how often will I get to hear about the needs of our users or customers? And what would a typical day look like for me if I were to take on this position? Maybe you're not interviewing for a new role, but you want to bring what you learned in this Agile course back to your team. How would you go about that? As we discussed, bringing Agile or Scrum to a new team is often challenging if their culture doesn't support it. Here are four things that helped me bring Agile to my teams. First, start small. You may be excited by everything you've learned here, but your team might like things how they are. So introduce Agile practices in bite-sized pieces. Maybe start by using a Kanban board just to keep track of one work stream, or set up a retrospective after a major milestone. Second, listen to feedback. The most powerful tool a project manager has is the ability to listen to their team and meet them where they are. When you introduce changes, ask the team how it's going, get their ideas on how to make it better, and include them in your approach. This will amplify your small changes into big results for the team. Third, be strategic. Target your improvements to challenges your team has today. Introduce new ways of working that address head-on the biggest issues your team's experiencing. For example, maybe your team has trouble estimating effort predictably and always ends up in crunch mode. Maybe relative estimation techniques would help with that. Or maybe you have too many people chiming in on what the product should be. Introducing a single person who acts as the product owner to help ensure consistency in prioritizing features. Lastly, find allies. You may have setbacks or need to lean on supporters to bring these ideas back to your team. Find agile allies in your organization or network. These allies will give you advice when things get rough and help you stick to agile values and principles. We built up a network of about 60 volunteer agile coaches here at Google, and we're always leaning on each other for ideas and solutions. Congratulations on finishing this video in the Google Project Management Certificate. Access the full learning experience, including job search help, and start to earn your official certificate by clicking on the icon. To view the next course in this video, click here. And subscribe to our channel to learn more from Google Career Certificates.